Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. In my last video, I talked about my idea for making these 3D printed floating kinetic sculptures for my booth at the World Maker Fair in New York. If you recall, it involved buying these magnetic levitating platforms and then creating models that sit on the levitating disc to create this surreal effect of a floating dancing sculpture. Well, I modeled five different designs in Fusion 360 and displayed them all at the fair and they were a big hit. Everyone who walked by my booth would do a double take and wonder how these beautiful sculptures were floating. It really was a nice display of form, colors, and movement, all while seeming to break the laws of physics. I used polyalchemy elixir filament to 3D print most of these, and I can't tell you how many people stopped by and asked if these were metallic. By the way, polyalchemy, if you're listening, I must have sent hundreds of people to your website over the weekend. Oh, hey Amy, I didn't even know you were here. By the way, if you like my Check Out My ABS shirt, uh, you can get it from Amy, who sells it on her website, amydd.com. And while you're there, check out all the awesome projects that she's doing. Let me show you the different designs I ended up going with and then I'll briefly jump into Fusion 360 to show you how I approached this design which was the most popular because of its trippy effect. I started with this twisty vase which I modeled mostly in the sculpting environment and then made this other sculpture which is has the sort of double twist that's the one I'll, I'll go over with in a minute and of course I had to make a giant fidget spinner this one was popular with the kids and this one's actually my favorite it's this sort of turbine inspired design uh, just a crazy shape but really looks wonderful when it's spinning here it is I printed it on an Ultimaker it came really nice with that pearl uh, filament uh, here's a top view of it and here's a picture of it floating okay let's jump into Fusion 360 now and I'll show you how I tackled this design uh, it looks a bit complicated but it's really not as bad as you think I'm gonna go uh, fairly quick through this but I will be uploading a much slower step-by-step -step guide on my website at desktopmix.com all right, we'll begin with a new design and I'm gonna create a sketch here on the XY plane and then I'm gonna grab my polygon tool. We'll go with the circumscribed polygon. I'm gonna go with, uh, let's do a 35 uh, radius there and we'll do an octagon, so eight sides. All right, I'm gonna stop sketch and then I'm gonna create another sketch on my ZX plane and here I'm gonna grab a line. I'm gonna go straight from the origin up 200 millimeters hit enter and this you're going to want that to be the height of uh, your sculpture that you're making or your vase okay I'm going to click stop sketch I'm going to grab one more thing and that's going to be the coil so I'm going to go to create uh, down to coil uh, draw a coil on my XY plane start at my origin there I'm just going to come out click again and here is where you're going to set this based on the look you want so there's really no wrong answer here but I'm going to give you a few tips all right, uh, type is going to be revolution and height. I'm going to set my diameter to 70 revolution. I'll keep that at one height. I'm going to do 200 here um, and we'll come back to angle in a second. Uh, section size, I'll do 18 uh, and we're going to do a new body. OK, now here's the important part uh, to make this have its shape. This little widget here, that's that angle. So notice I can increase it or decrease it. And I'm going to just type in an angle here of 20 degrees. And what that does is it creates this coil that starts off narrow and just gets wider as it uh, increases in height. So I'm going to set that to 20, click OK. And now I'm going to go to create and grab my sweep command, which is right here. And for sweep type, I'm going to choose path and guide rail here. Uh, profile is going to be my polygon that I created, that octagon, my path. I'm going to click on that and that's going to be my line here, my vertical line and my guide rail is going to be this line right here on my coil. You can see that that will highlight. So once I click that, I'm going to change the operation from cut to new body. Click OK and expand bodies here. I'm just going to get rid of this body one and that leaves me with this uh, sort of uh, twisty cone shape. All right, now we're going to take this here and uh, move it to the top. So what I'm going to do is uh, right click and go down to move slash copy. Uh, select my object here. Make sure move object is set to bodies. And I'm going to go to create copy. All I'm going to do is just take this arrow and move it up. 
click OK. And now, uh, here's another great tip. Just go to a Modify, down to Align, click on this surface, and then click on this surface. They're aligned. I'm just going to click Flip, and then click OK. And there's my shape. Now, we do have two bodies here, so we're going to combine them by going to Modify, Combine, uh, 1 and 2. Uh, operation is Join. Click OK. And then finally, or uh, right before the last step, actually two more steps. I'm gonna fill it um, just these uh, uh, these edges here because I found when it prints, um, when you print this, I'm gonna print it in vase mode. It just makes for a nicer transition if I just give it a little fillet there. So I'm just gonna select the box from uh, left to right, give it a fillet of one millimeter, uh, and let's see if that works. Great. Click OK. Do the same thing with the bottom. The reason I'm not selecting them together uh, and doing them separate is because I don't want to fillet this middle line here. It's just it's not going to work. I tried it. So F for fillet and then I'm going to just draw a box around any portion of this bottom section. Uh, give it a radius of one millimeter. Click OK. All right, and there it is. And then the last thing I did was just create a sketch here on the bottom. This is where I put my uh, the floating uh, magnet. So I would just make a circle. In this case, it was 22 millimeters. And then extrude that up. I believe I did uh, 14 millimeters. We'll go with that. So negative 14. Click OK. And I'm just going to do a little chamfer here. So I'm going to go to Modify, down to Chamfer, select this edge, do a 2 millimeter chamfer, and click OK. And the reason for that is when I print this in vase mode, uh, it won't print the top because I'll do a zero uh, top layers. But just that little chamfer there will allow it to secure that disk that's in there. Um, I realized actually that I'm going to, I meant this to be. Um, 44, not 22, so I'm going to double click on this sketch here. Um, 22 was the radius, 44 is the diameter, so I'm just going to change that. Okay, that looks a lot better. Okay, so that's my design in a nutshell, guys. I know I went really quick. I threw a lot at you here, um, but I just wanted to really speed through this to just show you um, how I tackle this design. And on my website, you can find uh, my tutorials and my courses that they go much slower than this. Uh, but you can see just, um, you know, learning a few tools here, how you can really be efficient in your designs. Uh, all right. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and just a heads up, if you followed me and you want to print this, you're going to want to scale this down a bit because the way I modeled it, it's got a height of 400 millimeters, which is uh, too big for most printers. So just wanted to give you that heads up. All right. Bye for real.